Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, or whatever time it is in, um, in your local place. We are streaming live from uh, the Copenhagen Fintech uh, Lab, the World Fintech Festival, Copenhagen Fintech Edition. So welcome everyone. It's a cold and gray Copenhagen morning, but it's a warm studio, so we get a little bit of the Singapore feeling here in Copenhagen, so that's nice. My name is uh, Thomas Kro, and I'm the CEO of Copenhagen Fintech and will be your host for this uh, Global Scene event. So just uh, a few words from me around Copenhagen Fintech and what it is we are uh, focusing on today. So we are at the Copenhagen Fintech Lab at uh, our sustainable studio that you can see behind me. Um, here, from here, we host 300 events a year uh, in 2,000 square meters in the middle of uh, vibrant Copenhagen. We uh, have had 130 fintech companies sitting with us during the past four years since we were established in 2016. If you look at the ecosystem just in Denmark, uh, it comprises of 280 fintech companies. If you expand that to the Nordics, you, we count around 1,000 different companies working with uh, innovative solutions within financial technology. We uh, offer different programs for uh, both domestic but also foreign companies wanting to launch their fintech venture in, uh, in Denmark and the Nordics and beyond. We uh, host 60 uh, really competent mentors that help the companies scale and several programs, everything from incubation to acceleration. We are non-for-profit and association and work on positioning Denmark and the Nordics as a leading uh, fintech hub. So. Just a little bit around what we're going to talk about today, because some of the things we will touch upon uh, in this session will be partnerships. And we have done quite a number of publications and quite some thought leadership in uh, around this topic. So we started actually in 2019 with uh, writing a white paper around the barriers of successful corporate and fintech collaborations. It's a very like a practitioner's guide that will give you very concrete advice on this. A strategic pr perspective we published later from uh, together with PA Consulting Group and then some case-based research together with EUI. So just just uh, for you to, uh, to take a look at uh, uh, regarding this subject. So also why are, we, why are we combining partnerships with sustainability? As you can see here, Finland, Sweden, Denmark and Norway is ranking very high on the list of SDG achievements, which means that we think that Denmark and the Nordics are uniquely positioned to actually um, have a say in this agenda. Also, if you look at the most sustainable companies, you will see quite a number of, of Danish and other Nordic companies topping this top 10 list of most sustainable companies in the world. We've also mapped out the entire space here. So if you look at FinTech and look at FinTech uh, solutions, companies that, that work within um, uh, sustainability and impact. We actually map this out together with uh, our partner Implement. So we'll also be able to access that, uh, that those insights from our website. So now, uh, without further ado, I will actually leave the, the stage for the CEO of Simcorp, Klaus Holze, that will talk about exactly what I've just talked about, partnerships, sustainability and financial technology. Go ahead, Klaus. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas, and uh, thank you all of you out there for watching this. Uh, I'm Klaus Holzer. I'm the CEO of Simcorp. Simcorp is a company, a fintech company that has been here for almost 50 years. We serve the buy side of the investment management uh, industry. We uh, service the very biggest customers uh, around the world. Anybody who manages uh, $20 billion or up is kind of a typical customer uh, of ours. We are a very global company in, uh, in nature, and we are headquartered here in uh, Copenhagen. The first uh, slide I will show you is kind of how we spread around the world, and you'll see that uh, we have a good presence here in uh, the Nordics, but also very good presence in Asia and in uh, the Northern uh, American part of the world. So all of the biggest uh, companies, uh, all of the biggest investment companies around this is typically our customers. And for us, uh, partnerships is important and the way we can bring partnerships to all of these many customers around the world. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. 
As I said, uh, we are an almost 50-year-old company. We are global. I think we are getting close to 30 offices around the world, different countries we are in. Uh, so a very global uh, company in uh, nature. We have uh, more than uh, 20,000 users uh, on the system. And as I said, uh, about 300 customers uh, on the system, about 2,000 employees in the, in the company. And then uh, I think we are unique uh, compared to many other companies in the sense of we have for all of our history invested very much into R&D. So today we spend more than 20% of our revenue every year in R&D. And that means that more than a third of the company is actually employed in R&D. So a very innovative company, a very technology driven company is uh, what SimCorp is, which is also why partnerships is important uh, to us. If you look at some of the customers and clients that we have around the world, uh, you see uh, some of the list uh, on this one. And what you see is that they kind of group into different buckets. Uh, so there's a set of asset managers and banks and so on. And I'm sure that you will recognize uh, some of the names on, uh, on this one, like uh, companies like uh, Franklin Templeton, Fannie Mae, UBS, uh, big, big customers. Uh, some of them running uh, trillion dollars uh, through the system on, on a yearly basis. So really, really big customers. Fund management, insurance, some of the biggest insurance companies in the world is also uh, represented here. AXA Generali in, uh, in Europe and uh, also uh, a number of larger US uh, companies as well. Life and pension, you kind of take the who's who of uh, pension in Canada, in the Nordics and so on. And they are customers of uh, Simcorp as well. On the asset servicing side, we work with a number of banks that services the, the asset uh, managers and the investment managers around the world. So again, as you can see, these are some of the biggest uh, companies around the world in this space. We are very proud to have these as uh, customers of SimCorp, but at the same, so, and uh, the trends in, uh, in their industry is very clearly uh, one that is uh, putting more and more pressure uh, on them. What you're seeing is that we see fee pressure uh, coming in, pressure on the margin is, uh, is part of this. There's an industry consolidation, so you're seeing kind of all of the uh, asset managers consolidate. We just saw Franklin Templeton, Lake Mason uh, get into this. We see uh, more and more investment in uh, multi-asset strategies. And uh, as Thomas also mentioned, EST is becoming an increasingly port important part of what uh, asset managers and investment managers have to think about investing in a sustainable way. There's a big driver on digitization to get to more access to customers and so on in a digital way. And with the pandemic, that has uh, increased uh, for sure. Then there's a drive for efficiency, more data, kind of being much better at the operational stage given the cost pressure, given the pressure on the, on the system, then saving cost, being more operationally uh, proficient is really getting important. And then there's a, a, a big focus on algorithms, smart beta, factor investment, uh, proprietary algorithms that, uh, that drives investment. So e each of these are data driven, it's uh, science driven, it's algorithmic driven. And that also means there's a lot of innovation going on in this area. And as you can see uh, on, on the right hand side, there's a kind of, you know, you see some of the numbers that goes into this. So an industry that is changing, an industry that is up for innovation all the time, an industry that is very good for small companies to access and give input in. Part of the challenges in, in this one is how do you get access to these big companies? Many of these big companies have you know, systems that are not integrated. They are, uh, you know, in many different, uh, different systems. Uh, they are best of breed, you can say. And that gives many of these customers a difficulty in responding to change. It has cost uh, to adapt uh, to this, and it inhibits kind of the cross-handling of data. It also makes it difficult for innovation to happen. It makes it uh, uh, difficult for small companies to come in and have a conversation with these companies because they'll then suddenly have to integrate to many different systems. With what we provide, which is one uh, system front to back, covering all of the processes that a company has and covering all of the assets classes that a company invests in, all the way from you know uh, fixed income, equities, and, and uh, all the way to alternative real estate, private equity, and so on. Having one system to integrate to allows these partners a much better opportunity. They can come in, they can talk to 
integrating into one system the, uh, the system that uh, SimCorp uh, provides. So if you look at it, then our idea is that the customer having one integrated system has a much better operating platform, lower cost, opportunity to be global, and so on. SimCorp, by partnering with uh, some of these uh, fintech companies out there, can give the customer more optionality, give the customer uh, kind of more richness in the types of applications they can access and so on. And for the partner, many times the difficulty is to access these big companies. If you're a small company, how do you then get access to these big companies? How do you, you know, who do you talk to? And how do you integrate into this? So I think as SimCorp, we can simplify this. We've got good connection to these many uh, customers around the world. And we can bring kind of the, uh, the system vendor, the integrator into this. We can bring uh, kind of the, uh, the innovator, the startup, the fintech into this in a much easier way, providing them the access, the marketing into these uh, big customers. So in some senses, if you look at kind of the value chain uh, that any of these uh, investment managers have, all the way from aggregating data, portfolio uh, construction, and all the way through the investment cycle and then back to settlement risk management and so on, I think there's opportunity to integrate some of these uh, innovators and some of this, uh, these fintechs into this. So at each of these points, a lot of opportunity. One opportunity, as I talked to, is ESG. So there's a lot going on in trying to figure out which companies are really sustainable, how do I build a portfolio of sustainable companies, how do I build a fund that has uh, sustainability and allow people to invest along with that. There's the, the next piece is how do I then construct a portfolio, how do I optimize my portfolio? That can be towards ESD, it can be towards any other uh, objective I might have, but portfolio construction, portfolio optimization is really important. And then maybe towards the end of, uh, of, the, of this, you will see uh, kind of uh, stuff like taxes, withholding tax and so on, becoming important in, uh, in this. I'll give you these three examples as, uh, as companies we've partnered with. One is eBlue that has kind of all of the EST uh, functionality. They can kind of do the ratings of each of the assets. They can uh, attribute KPIs to them according to uh, the sustainability goals and, and other uh, metrics that is out there. You can have custom ratings, risk assessment of, uh, of each of these companies, and then given the policy definitions and so on, decide which ones fits into your portfolio. So <clears throat> they provide all of the data. We can easily integrate that data into the bigger system and make all of that data available to a portfolio manager that needs to figure out what their portfolio should be. Another uh, example is uh, the, the company called WTAX, which is somebody who helps you uh, reclaim withholding tax. So funds will typically have uh, taxes uh, sitting behind where they have to reclaim that tax from the country uh, where the assets are in. And typically uh, when, uh, when you employ something like this, you're able to get uh, you know, a, a good uh, part of the investment back. Uh, up to uh, five bips in, uh, in this is the, is the target. So a lot of uh, opportunity in, uh, in getting a more uh, uh, profitable fund uh, based on also being able to reclaim uh, the withholding taxes that are out there. The last one I want to mention is Intellibonds uh, that we're just announcing a partnership with uh, uh, today. This is a company that does uh, portfolio optimization, portfolio construction as well and they use AI for this. So by using AI, they're able to help construct the right set of portfolios and so on, specifically in a complicated area like, uh, like fixed income. So we're gonna talk more about this as we get into uh, the panel uh, after this, but again, a good uh, you know, sign or a good uh, example of a smaller company integrating into the value chain having access to all of the customers that SimCorp have today, and we'll be happy to help them kind of make this available to all of the customers we have uh, out there. So three examples of partnerships along the value chain uh, that uh, we are servicing our customers with. So that's it. There's more opportunity. Uh, so far, we are getting close to about 100 partners that we partner with uh, this way, and there's still opportunity for more. So if you are somebody out there, fintech, uh, watching this thinking, wow, 
that would be interesting to get access to these 300 customers, then this is a small uh, shingle or a short advertisement uh, for you to get in touch, and uh, we'll see what we can do uh, to also create a partnership with you and uh, get you access to all of the customers we have, and potentially you can help us get more customers as well. Thank you.